Hey guys, Thunder E here. You guys asked for this video and here it is, the P40 Pro from Huawei versus the Galaxy S20 Ultra versus, yes, I added a few more, the LG um, V60 ThinQ and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Now we're starting off with the front facing camera. We're gonna to switch to those other two devices, all shooting at 4K 60. And uh, then we will go ahead and record some more. So let's switch. So in terms of audio, both phones, the P40 Pro and the S20 Ultra do a good job with audio recording. Now we're looking at the rear camera's 4K 60 and you can see the S20 Ultra has better stabilization than the Huawei P40 Pro. When it comes to colors, especially in the horizon, the sky, the P40 Pro is much punchier. The S20 Ultra is a bit more muted and more balanced, I would say. Now, in terms of this backlit shot here, I like what the S20 Ultra is giving me, but in general, both are still doing a good job, though stabilization is much better on the S20 Ultra. Now, let's switch over to the V60 ThinQ and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. All right, so now we've switched over to the LG V60 ThinQ and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. You're gonna see how, of course, they handle video, walking with the front-facing camera 4K 60. Now, the LG has three different audio modes. What I'm using now is called Voice Bokeh, which focuses on my voice directly. So it should sound better than any of the other devices. Uh, but now we're going to walk and finish this and then switch to our rear cameras for both devices. So moving over to the rear cameras of both the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the LG V60 ThinQ, the first thing you notice is the iPhone stabilization. It is really, really good compared to, of course, what you're seeing from LG here, which is actually quite shaky. In terms of color tones, uh, they look quite similar in terms of color tones and uh, similar to the environment that I actually shot it in. Now, in terms of stabilization, I rank the iPhone number one, the Galaxy S20 Ultra is number two, the Huawei is number three, and the LG V60 ThinQ comes in at number four. But you've got to just be impressed with how well the iPhone is stabilized as a video camera. Now, when we look at shots from the front facing camera of all these devices, the Huawei P40 Pro here and the S20 Ultra with its portrait mode do a really good job with edge detection. Also, the skin tone is really good. Though the Huawei looks like a more polished version of me, I do like what the Galaxy is still doing right here. Shirt colors are also quite similar to what the shirt colors should be. LG, the shirt colors off. Also, my skin tone is more orangey and there is some edge detection issues at the top of my head. The iPhone keeps the shirt color image, uh, shirt color correct, as well as also my skin tone to match. Egg detection is pretty good all around, but just a few places here and there if I was gonna nitpick. Now, as we transition to uh, this image outdoors here, the Galaxy tends to darken me quite a bit, but its egg detection is pretty solid because my finger isn't blurred out, while the Huawei P40 Pro is blurring out my finger, but uh, everything else seems solid. The colors of the Huawei are actually spot on right here. Now, moving over to the uh, V60 and the iPhone, both of them have brightened up the image quite a bit, and you can see the edge detection issues with the finger as well. Uh, but again, the whole image is bright, and I do prefer the V60 over the iPhone. What the iPhone is doing here is kind of fuzzy in, in a sense. Now, this is more of a backlit shot, and you can see, again, the darkness and the contrast the Ultra brings into the shot though it still keeps a, a nice focus of uh, blur in the background. The Huawei does a good job with me as well as also my background as well, but it doesn't blur it out as much in this shot. Now the iPhone and the V60 have done something completely different. They try to brighten out the image, while the V60 has darkened me quite a bit and also my shirt. The iPhone has kept the shirt color intact, but it's made me a bit more orangey and everything in the background is just super bright and blurred out. So in an era of multiple uh, main camera sizes, the Huawei here in this shot does a good job with this background bokeh, but I like what the S20 Ultra is doing. 108 megapixels compared to 50, of course, binning and all that fun stuff. 
Now, when you look at the LG V60 here, it's a bit brighter and I do like what the iPhone is doing here because of course the iPhone is giving a better representation of my skin color as well as also the color of my shirt. So that's something um, I think you guys should just uh, pay attention when you're taking photos with these cameras. Now, this is a shot we'll get back to. The P40 Pro and the Galaxy, they both look great. Though the color is of the, of the S20 Ultra is closer to the exact color of this uh, setting itself while the LG V60 think you here is much brighter and the iPhone has gone into this blue tint though they all look good but very different color palettes that all these cameras are are bringing to the table especially for this shot which we'll see later with some low light shots in this video now here's an ultra wide shot there's one thing uh, the Huawei does it tends to punch up the colors I do kind of like it with the ultra wide because you're trying to capture a lot of a landscape the galaxy is a bit more muted here in this shot especially this view of uh, of Brooklyn the iPhone is also quite muted and the LG is a bit pumped up not too much though in terms of the uh, the color uh, palette, but all look good in the ultra wide uh, capture. So moving to this main shot here, both the Huawei and the Galaxy look pretty solid. The Huawei colors, of course, are a bit punchier, but that's fine. We're going to look at this path here straight down with all uh, cameras as well as the V60 and the iPhone 11 Pro Max here. Both of them are a bit on the wash, have a bit more washed out look, but the colors still look fine. Now we're gonna go into zoom. Uh, first, we're going to a 2X zoom for the uh, LG V60 and the iPhone. You can see it's a bit much brighter. You can see more of that path in between. And this is the maximum zoom you can get uh, without going into your uh, digital zoom. But we're gonna check out a 5X digital zoom so we can match up with the other devices. So with the V60 thing Q, it's a bit brighter. You can see the two buildings in the back quite well. The I, and it's a bit more focused than what the iPhone does with its 5X uh, digital zoom. I prefer the V60 image. It just feels a little more uh, sharper. Now, when we go to the 5X of the Galaxy and the uh, Huawei, the Huawei has the natural darkness, which you would see because of the way the sun is at this point in time. The Galaxy brightens it up so you can see more detail with 5X zoom here. And when we move into 10X zoom though, the Huawei I think is just a sharper image, even though there's more shadow. The, um, the Galaxy is sharp, but it's a bit faded on the building on the right. So you have that uh, in there. Now the Galaxy can go into 30 and, and of course uh, uh, 50 and 100 X zoom, uh, while the Huawei goes to 50. Now when we switch over to the front facing camera at night, now this is quite interesting with the Huawei and the Galaxy. You can clearly see more of me on the Galaxy than the Huawei. The Huawei image is very um, noisy. Uh, and when we get into more lighting situations the galaxy lights it up a bit more and just the imaging comes out much better on the galaxy now using the front facing camera with the v60 and the iphone surprising with the iphone the iphone is completely dark the v60 is noisy but you can clearly see me you can see, clearly see me where the galaxy buds a much better image overall but the iphone once you start getting in more lights the iphone basically of course looks a bit better right there now with the rear cameras for both devices, uh, here we have the Galaxy. Now, again, this is post update. So I've got autofocus and you can see better focus. Stabilization, of course, is not as, as smooth, but still good. The Huawei is brighter, but very noisy image overall. Again, this is all recording at 4K 60. And then when we move back to the LG V60 and the iPhone 11 Pro Max, the iPhone here is more stable, uh, though the image quality, I think, though brighter, not as sharp as the V60. V60 is not as stable as the iPhone. And the imagery also, uh, though sharper, but not as bright as what you have. Okay, what about night mode photos with the front facing camera? Now the iPhone doesn't have a night mode. So this is a shot here with the iPhone is quite grainy, but you can clearly still see my face. Now, when we move over to the other three phones, the Huawei, the LG, the Galaxy, the Galaxy has the best image. Uh, it's less grainy, it's sharper, it's brighter. You can see my face, the colors of the two jackets I'm wearing. The LG V60 is the second best though. The color of my skin is more orangey in look, while the Huawei 
way is probably the least out of all three but still a good image you can still see me clearly uh but uh it's much darker of all uh three images here when it comes to low light selfies now trying to recreate a club like scene we have some pink light coming in and you can see the huawei is kind of dark in my skin tone especially around my face uh, and also darkened my shirt while the galaxy has kind of brightened the shirt up and added infused that pink light all around giving you a much clearer image uh, i think overall uh with between these two and then looking at the v60 it's really taking a lot of that light in uh the sh the shirt color actually isn't bad compared to the iphone where the top half of the shirt really looks deep blue and then you've got more pink infusion in my face as well making my skin tone look a bit reddish um in general again it's a tough situation but i wanted to see how it would do in in complex lighting and low light situations now this is a shot i mentioned earlier that we, we were going to get back to and we're checking out in of course low light situations the both of in both images look solid from both the Galaxy and the Huawei. Though the Galaxy represents the color of the building much better and less contrast and saturation as opposed to the Huawei which has that kind of shiny sheen to it. Still lovely images. Uh, while the LG V60 is very similar to the Huawei and the iPhone is similar to the to Galaxy. Though the iPhone has brightened the sky and added a little bit more of a slight orange tint which isn't there. It's just adding more of the yellow from the lighting around the city it's picked up. Now the ultra wide uh, shot here, low light, both images look nice though the galaxy is more representative of the colors in daytime and you can see more of the yard as opposed to that darkened feature set where it's still clear but uh, very different on the Huawei P40 Pro. While with the V60 ThinQ it's kind of added a bit more of a a uh, soft glow to it while of course the iPhone doesn't have low light in, um, capabilities in the ultra wide camera hopefully that changes this year you can see it's a bit more faded on the V60 now this is of course the main camera lens and you've seen some of the similar features where I do like the way the Huawei looks in the background while the foreground uh, the Huawei's colors are a bit off the Galaxy is much better and I like that that's the focus and it's much sharper with the Galaxy than it is with the Huawei P40 Pro now with the V60 ThinQ, it brightens everything all the way through. And I think the iPhone has the best uh, background color palette, while the foreground uh, is brighter. It's not as bright as the Galaxy, but it's still nice. And it's a good composition image as opposed to what the V60 brings, which is still good. Now, our final set of shots here, looking at, of course, this water tower we've taken a couple of times. The Huawei P40 Pro image is really nice. It showcases the fans, it shows the water tower, the building. The Galaxy is a bit more muted something that we used to be brighter maybe the update has changed a couple of things here it's a bit fuzzy in the foreground while both the v16 and the iphone 11 pro max do a really good job here again uh, with the foreground and the background while the v60 is really bright uh, especially around the subject matter of the water tower and the iphone is a little bit more balanced in between for the foreground and the background the images now when we look at zoom here the uh, huawei is brighter with the zoom at 5x the galaxy a bit more muted but again Again, both images I think I do like the Galaxy it's not as a shaky image as uh, what I have with the uh, Huawei and then when we go to 10x zoom this is where the Galaxy really shines you can see 10x zoom on the Huawei it's really dark you can't see the uh, subject matter quite clearly as opposed to the Galaxy where it's quite bright you can read the, read the letter in you can see the water tower in clear uh, full distinction so I have to say though, this comparison has been quite interesting with the results that you see here. On the one hand, the iPhone 11 Pro Max still does a good job all around, but of course lacking certain aspects like no low light photography in ultra wide and also the front facing camera. On the other hand, you have the P40 Pro, which comes in really strong with its imagery. In terms of taking photos, uh, the front facing camera does a really good job. Uh, the rear cameras also do a solid job and the zoom also is quite impressive, matching or getting close to what the Galaxy S20 Ultra brings to the table. And the Ultra also is no slouch with its uh, front facing camera and its video acumen. Now, LG, on the other hand, seemed a bit average for me all around, but still solid, uh, maybe not as high as the other ones. Uh, it did really good job with audio though, especially in uh, the uh, 
voice recording with the front facing camera as well as also video recording you know, with the front facing camera in low light conditions. I think there are many parts where these smartphones do better than the other depending on what you're looking at but I think it all uh, resides on what you want to use it for and that's why I'm going to ask you guys what did you guys think was the best smartphone for you here in this video. If you have any questions or any comments, let me know. If you're looking to buy any of the items you've seen in this video, use our links down below. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.